to evolve as a person. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. And I think um, something that I've really um, tried to make the habit of, of remembering is that we're not made to have all the answers whilst we're alive, you know? And every time you think that, because we're set up to problem solve, you know? And that, that's how we've evolved. And there's so much, so much of the brain's wiring is, is set up so that we can solve problems and, and figure things out. And that's why we've become the most dominant species, you know? So we have this beautiful problem solving mechanism within us. And then we have this sort of almost like a spiritual existential crisis of wanting to know all the answers that we can't possibly know whilst we're here. So we, we always have this fighting internal battle within ourselves to want to figure out all these answers that we can't possibly know, but at the same time, accept that and then paradoxically try to figure all those ones out again. And it just, it, it, it's like this, um, Alan Watts called it the double mind where, where we're fighting to get to one place but by getting to one place, we're excluding that the, we only know that place in, 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 in compensatory terms because of its opposite other. And the more we try to go to one place, the more we neglect this other place. So if you always want to be happy, you're basically just saying that you're sad now. But if you just said that you weren't sad now, you'd be happy right now. But there's always this really bizarre paradox going on all the time. And if you can take yourself out of that, it's just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm essentially playing tug of war with my two hands here, you know, and I don't even need to be doing that. I'm just living, I'm just being right now, you know. Another example is we live in a, in a pleasure-seeking world, you know, necessarily. It's that idea that we, like, like you said before, we don't have the chance to be bored anymore. That's not to say that we can't be bored anymore because you can take on that incentive and that responsibility yourself and lock yourself in a room if you, if you absolutely need to, if there's something biting at your core. But... It is, it is harder and harder to, to spend time with yourself in this day and age, you know. More often than not, as, as young men, you know, living a thousand years ago, we'd be told that we just have to go on, on a bloody pilgrimage and we just have to learn. And if we die, we die. But if we live, we can come back with some, some amazing stories of, uh, and heroic tales, you know. But this day and age, like you said, you can get a little bit of a dopamine bump by, get, you know, whipping your phone out straight away. But we only know what pleasure feels like because we know what pain feels like. If we didn't know what pain felt like, we have, we'd have no understanding of the pleasure in and of itself. So you can look at that in every single facet of life with the labels that we put on things. We only know something in relation to its other. So if we stop trying to fight for happiness all the time, we're probably going to stop being sad. And then we can live in this beautiful sort of content space where everything is meaningful, but nothing is meaningful at the same time. But it doesn't matter because everything is. So it's a union of opposites idea. It's really interesting. Mm, that's, that's heavy, man. That it, is heavy. It is quite heavy. <laughs>